So today what I'm doing is I'm following another river. Um, I was going to walk this route, but there's a bus strike on today, so I couldn't get to Springwell, which is the start of it. This is going to be walking the River Don. Uh, the River Don is forms the boundary between Gateshead and South Shields. So we're not far from the actual source of the river. It's actually in a little farm uh, just to the right of me over here. It's not worthwhile going down there because it seems like private property and that. And in front of us, you can see the Fallingsby Park industrial estate with Amazon warehouses stretching out towards Sunland in the distance. This uh, bridleway is actually the route of the old Bowes Valley line, which used to run down here. And there is still a section of it as a heritage railway back there. Now, I'm not sure, but I presume this would have ran all the way down to the Port of Tyne, most likely being a colliery track, taking coal down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to continue on, follow the route. It might not be cycle friendly, but um, that might be quite fun. And then we'll follow this all the way from the source, which is around here, to the mouth of the river in Jarrow, and talk about Jarrow Slake and all that sort of thing. So let's go. So after passing over the A19, we're now coming into Follinsby Park. And this Amazon warehouse is just to the north of the river. Absolute monster of a building. It's hard to actually describe in words how big this warehouse structure actually is. Probably goes on for a few hundred meters. What's interesting about this is it's also a bridleway, so rather than like a tarmac path, it has this soft, rubbery uh, material. So I've just travelled over what I presume is the A19. The other one must have not been the A19, that must have been the A19. And there's a whole new sort of junction scheme, and what you get is the, the telltale signs of uh, man made suds ponds, over engineered drainage. <laughs> And we're continuing down a little bride away. The river's to the right hand side of us in a valley, but it's running through farmers' fields, so you can't actually get access to it. And that small little sliver of which saw as him and the A19. It's the only sliver we've seen so far on this route. So now, for the first time, we're actually by the River Don. So this dense patch of vegetation actually lies there. So this whole route, we've not been able to get anywhere near it. And finally, we have, but this is just so densely packed with vegetation. You can barely even see it. I'm hoping it's gonna open up in a bit and we can finally see what the state of the river is. But for the time being, it's, it's been quite a rural stream flowing through farmers' fields and around the edges of industrial warehouses. It's a very different in character to say something like the River Team at the moment. But as I think we get into the industrial areas and the former industrial areas around Jarrow, that might change. And again, we've gone away from the river. 
somewhere to the right of us. Um, I can tell. I'm going past some small pitches, I think maybe football pitches to the left of me, part of Bolden. Um, and again, on like a little bridleway track. But it's the closest you can really get to the river. As you saw, it's uh, flown nicely through that countryside park. It looks healthy ish, uh, there's some man made structures in it. So this is clearly some old railway with a little duck path underneath. A day duck path isn't like a footpath. I'm saying extra ducking. Um, but the state of this place, just all of it is just. As you can probably tell. A lot of this is just not good for cycling on. As I say, I was going to walk this route, which is what it's more designed for. But yeah, the bus strike meant I couldn't get out. So I'm just dragging my bike along. But yeah, a lot of it is just very narrow paths by the river. We're coming into what I believe is either Bead or Broccoli Winds Metro. I think it's Broccoli Winds on the Sunderland line. So I ventured away a little bit from the river just because some of the routes down there were awful. So I'm next to the uh, metro tracks at the minute and the river's just to the left of us. We shouldn't be too far away from it all. But yeah, I just couldn't take the bike down there. Right, it's the usual roar of a road next to us. As a path is this uh, little narrow thing. River Don is somewhere behind the camera, uh, but hidden behind our house and estate, etc. This is the first sign I've actually seen for a River Don footpath because this is not an enjoyable footpath. Bridge under what I can only imagine is a time tunnel. It's dodges. This whole bit by the time tunnel is just lots of horrible underpasses. I honestly wouldn't recommend. Even for myself, one of them was literally not even taller than my head in height. Almost had to duck. What I was saying before I almost crashed was they were just really inhospitable places. Um, no lighting, just no nothing. A granddad and I like imagine his daughter on stabilizers down there. And then a group of youths under the bridge, which socialize where you're gonna socialize. But it just created quite a, an inhospitable place. And now I don't feel very often in town, I, I could, I'd walk anywhere, as you probably see, and I don't feel unsafe. And not that there was anything unsafe about the people there, it was more of the, the feeling the place excru excruciated, excluded or uh, projected. Um, luckily I'm back in a nice bit of woodland again. Um, and there's quite an interesting mosaic just behind me. So this route is actually called Bede's Way. So I guess this artwork is related to Bede. It's made of these tiles. And then there's the River Don, looking a lot more industrial with sort of the made ground in there and broken bits of stone. Now, so what summarizes some of my early remarks is uh, obviously that burnt out remain of a motorbike or whatever it was brought down here, maybe an e-scooter for all I know, brought down here and just burnt out. This land has been inhabited since the monks in Jarrow were here. And now it's this local nature reserve, but it's, it's rather quiet, even on a, on a, other than now, a sunny Sunday. Yeah, it's a strange, strange area along the River Don.
Now, what originally drew me to the River Don is obviously I'm trying to walk all the rivers, all the tributaries of Tyne and Weir is one of the reasons. But there's a really interesting story about this area behind. It used to be known as the Jarrow Slake. And what this was, was a, a tidal uh, marshland where the River Don actually used to run out. This isn't the original route of it. It used to run out through the middle of this made ground. And this now forms the, um, well, basically where they keep cars before they export them. But they, obviously they made all this land and infilled this natural wetland to create a lot of what the actual Port of Tyne is now. I brought this photo book by a guy called Vince Ray. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Or what he did was before the Jarrow Slake was reclaimed. He came here and made a photographic record of how the space was. And the photos in there are just very, very interesting of the place they do, the depict has such an aura to it. When plans to reclaim the slake were confirmed, I was drawn back to it as a man, feeling an overwhelming urge to document it before it vanished forever. I hope that the photographs which I then took and now reproduced here or perhaps serve as a reminder to the older readers and also convey some of the idea of the slake to younger readers. For at no time have I felt a stronger sense of Jarrah's history than when standing by these muddy waters. Vince Ray. But this photo book I bought especially for this, this piece and the photos in it are really quite amazing. Um, I believe Vince Ray used to have an art gallery uh, somewhere in South Shields uh, maybe I think it was in Jarrow itself actually, but uh, since his, he passed away, I think his art gallery closed. But seeing those photos of how Jarrow Slake used to be before, it's really interesting to now get here to the edge of the River Tyne and you just see some big boats and some cranes and a bit of land that looks like it's been there forever, when in reality 20 years ago, 30 years ago it wasn't. Quite an amazing space, not a part of the river I'd ever previously come down to. And I don't think it's, this video came out the way I wanted it to, but it's been an enjoyable experience to try and follow this river. Mm -hmm.